In today's video, I'm going to show you how straightforward it is to create and send your first sales invoice in Xero. Now there is some work you need to do, some setting up before you're ready to create and send your first invoice. If you're not sure what that is, I've got another video that you'll find in the description all about getting set up and ready to issue your first sales invoice. Assuming you've done that, let's head into Xero and I'll show you how to create and send a sales invoice. Okay, we're on the Xero dashboard and we have a few choices here how we go about creating a sales invoice. So let me talk you through what your choices are. You can go to the big plus sign and you can select invoice. Instead of that, you can go down to the section that says invoice is owed to you and you can click on new sales invoice. Or the third place you can go is to the business menu to the invoices section and here's all your invoices you have already and you can select new invoice here. There's two different ways that you can create a sales invoice in Xero. The end result is exactly the same. What is different is what the screen looks like when you're creating the sales invoice. If we scroll down, you see this option that says switch to new invoicing. So we're in the older style of invoicing. We can switch. And if you don't want it, you can switch back. I'm a fan of classic invoicing, so that's the one I'm going to talk you through. So the first question you get asked is who is your invoice to? Our first sales invoice is to a customer that's called Bespoke Beach Huts. If we start typing in the name, if it's already set up in Xero, it will appear and we can choose it. The invoice date is going to default to today's date. You can leave that or you can go to the drop down, go onto your calendar and choose the date that you want. We'll stick with today's date and the due date, you might recall if you've watched the previous video about how to get organized before you issue a sales invoice, we said we want our invoices to be due in 14 days. So 24th of April, 14 days later is the 8th of May. That's going to be the default for every sales invoice you create. But like most defaults in Xero, if you want to change it, you can. You again go to your calendar and choose the date that you want. We're going to leave it. And then we've got the invoice number and this has been created automatically. We've said we're quite happy of a prefix of INV and it's picked up the next numeric number, which is invoice 46. Again, it's a default and you could change it if you needed to, but there's no need to. So we're going to leave it. We've now got a field that's called a reference and this can be used for whatever you need it for. Often it won't be used. I never put a lot of information in here, but it might, for example, be used as a purchase order. So if your customer needed you to quote a purchase order, I would simply put in there PO and then whatever the purchase order number is. The next field is the branding of your invoice. Now again, we have looked at this. This is the layout of your invoice and you can have more than one layout. If you want invoices to look different depending what they're for or who they're going to, you can choose different layouts, different brandings. We don't need to. We're happy with the standard layout that we've already looked at and tidied up. So we just leave it like that. We've got a paper icon here. If you have any backup to go with your sales invoice, you can attach it here. Once you attach backup, you've got two options. You can have backup that you include with your invoice. So when you send your invoice to your customer, the backup will be included or the backup can simply be for you. So if you needed to attach some backup, you can attach it from a file library in Xero or you could upload from your computer. Then we get to the body of the invoice and we've got the section for items. This is if you have got stock and you're picking up items or if you want shortcuts to invoice. And for a lot of people, you would just head past that field and you go straight to the description. So now you're just typing in what do you want to appear on this sales invoice? Add our description. Then we get to the quantity and you must enter a quantity. It might be one if it's more than one and that's relevant. Then we'll put the quantity for here as five. The unit price we're going to say is 20. 
We skip past the discount field, we're not offering any discount for this, and then it goes to the standard sales account which Zero will pick up. If you click on the drop down, if you had more than one sales account, you can select the one that you want. We're happy with one sales account, so we're not going to change it. Then the tax rate, tax rate being VAT. Now Zero is saying, what do you want your VAT to be? What do you want this value? The five items at £20, which comes to 100 is that including VAT or excluding? So we're going to select tax exclusive because the amount of £100 is before VAT. When you do that, if you look down at the bottom, you've got the subtotal of 100 and then zero is going to add the VAT at 20% to take you to 120. Let's just change that. If it was tax inclusive, this time the £100 includes the VAT and Zero is going to work backwards and say if your total invoice is £100 then that's going to include VAT this time of 1667 So we're going to go back and choose the one we want which is the tax exclusive. If you needed to continue adding further lines you can keep going. We've got five lines on our screen. If we needed more we could add them. Then when we get down to the bottom of our screen if we needed to save our invoice as a, as a draft and come back to it, you can save it as a draft here. If we were finished with our invoice, we could go to the green and choose approve. We can also add some notes. So if there was anything you needed to add, you might want to refer back to, you can choose this add note and fill something in. We're happy with our invoice. We're going to approve it. Okay, I'm going to take you back to the dashboard. And I'm going to add another invoice by going to the plus and choosing invoice. This time we're going to scroll down and we're going to have a quick look at the new style of invoicing. So it looks a bit different on the screen, but similar fields. So who is it to? This time our invoice is to a customer that's not in zero. And the good thing about that is you can create a sales invoice even though your customer is not already in. Zero alerts you. This is a new contact, a new customer, that's fine. We just say, okay, yes, we're happy to add it. If you've got the details, you can fill them in at this stage. If we want to come back to that at a later stage, we can. Reference, it tells you it's optional. We don't need a reference for this. The invoice number, there you can see it's populated automatically and it's gone on to the next number, invoice 47. Again, the issue date is today and the due date is in 14 days time. Branding theme, again, is standard. So now we're just going to the description. Again, we're going to key in the quantity. We're going to key in the price. So what's happening on this layout? Now we have the account as a drop down. So we select the drop down if we needed to change the code it's going to. The same with the tax rate, but it's 20% VAT. Region we're not looking at. This is if we were using tracking and zero, which we're not for this example. Now we've already spoke about the amount excluding VAT. Again, there's a drop down if we needed to change that and we are saying the £75 is including VAT. So again, if it's including VAT, it works backwards. It says that the VAT is 1250 from the total. If we choose excluding VAT, the 20% is 20% of the 75 and this time it's added on to take us to our total. Attaching files is now down on the bottom left. You would choose it and then you can upload files to your invoice. Again, adding a note is here. If you look on the screen, you can see that you can continue editing your invoice because it's in draft mode. But what Zero does on the new style invoice is it saves it on a regular basis. Our invoice is now complete. We head over to the right hand side. We go to the drop down and this is where we choose the approve. We're back on our dashboard. We've created two sales invoices. Where are they in zero? We would choose the business menu and again we can just go to invoices which means sales invoices. And here is the list of all our sales invoices and we can see the two that we've created. Invoice 46 and invoice 47. We used the different layout but there's not any difference on the actual invoices. Let's go back into the first one. And remember we created it in classic invoice and so we'll just switch back to that layout. If we need to amend a sales invoice after we've created it, we can go to invoice options and here we can choose the edit option. 
So let's go into edit and let's say that the unit price was incorrect. We can change it. And once we make the change, we just choose update. So you've created your sales invoice. It's complete. Now you want to send it to your customer. You just choose the option that says email. Your customer's email needs to be in zero. If it's not, you would have to fill it in here. We've already looked at the wording that's going to be on our email and what we have created in zero is the default word and at this stage you can make any changes so it's saying hi and then it's picking up the contact name if we don't want it to say bespoke beach hats we could maybe just remove that look at the word and change it if we need to but if we want to make a change that's permanent we would go back to the email setting once we're happy with the wording we've got options down at the bottom so we can include our files if we had any as attachments we can include a PDF of the sales invoice, which a lot of your customers will be looking for. Mark it as sent, yes. And then if you needed to send a copy to yourself, which I tend not to bother with, you could tick that box and then you just choose send. And it's as simple as that, email an, an invoice to your customer. If we go back to the list of our invoices, invoice 46 if you head over to the right you can see now in zero it's marked that that invoice has been sent then your customer will receive an invoice click on it if you have set up to pay by card they can choose an option to pay their invoice right away if they want to go to the online invoice they can click on it here if they want to look at the pdf they can select it and this is what your sales invoice looks like so now let's look at what's different if we have chosen the new style invoice and send in our invoice. So we're on invoice 47 and I've just gone to the new style because that is how we created it. If we head over to the top right, we've got the three dots. We click on them and we have the option to send. And this looks very similar to what we saw when we were on the classic invoicing. Again, your default wording is here. If you wanted to change it, you can. If you want to change it on the template, you would go back to the settings and do that. You can send yourself a copy, you can attach a PDF, and it would be exactly the same as before. Send the invoice to your customer. What we can see now on the invoice, when we've sent it, there's a tick in the box here showing that it's been sent. Other thing, if we go back to the three dots, if we want to edit, we choose edit here. And again, if we want to make amendments, we would then finish off by selecting update. If we want to print the invoice, print PDF, the option is here. You might want to do that before sending it, but that's sending your invoice when it is the new style rather than the classic. Okay, back on the dashboard, we've not looked at payment services because we're in a demo company, but I'll just quickly show you where you would set those up. On your dashboard, choose the business name, choose settings, head over to the right and go to payment services. Now we got the option to pay now because in the demo company, it's set up as if you could pay by PayPal. But this is where you go if you want to set up payment services, allowing your customers to pay you by card. So that is a very quick look at creating and issuing a sales invoice in Zero. I think you will decide by yourself which layout you want to use. Have a play around with both of them and then decide which one you prefer. Maybe it's because I've been using Zero for a long time, but I'm quite happy sticking with the classic invoicing. If you liked the video, please let me know that you liked it. Why don't you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, and you'll get notified when new videos are uploaded on a regular basis. If you've got any questions, any comments, put them below and I'll do my best to respond. But until next time, happy zeroing.